Fatty liver is a metabolic issue, and sometimes that can be really difficult to see in typical pathology and typical blood work. That's what makes it so daunting is because a lot of times you don't notice it even on blood work until it's really far down the line and even then it can become a problem. Now it's my job to take as much information as I see out there and sort of reverse engineer things to help give people a playbook, right? It's unfortunate because people that are in a clinical setting don't always have the ability to like look at everything and reverse engineer stuff. I guess for the peanut gallery of what I do and given my experience of being overweight before, it's easier for me to look at that kind of thing. So what I'm explaining here with fatty liver is by no way like designed to diagnose, treat, or cure, but it is able to help paint a picture for you with what you should get tested. So I'm just gonna jump right into things. We have to understand that fatty liver affects our metabolism, okay? It's not just like the liver gets fat and you have a failing organ, okay? You have tissue in the liver, okay? And you have cells in the liver that become damaged and become scarred, and that directly affects our metabolism. So what we need to do is we need to look at these metabolic markers to understand the secondary effect of what is happening since we can't necessarily measure things directly. So what we eat does impact Okay, and we see this in the literature, and we'll talk about a few things that you can eat, things that you should take care of, okay? Before we dive in, after today's video, I want you to check out Seed. Now, I'm not saying that this symbiotic is going to help a fatty liver, that's not the intent. I am saying that when you start looking at your life holistically and you look at everything, having a good, diverse microbiome is not a bad thing. And Seed is what is called a daily symbiotic. So it is a combination of a prebiotic and a probiotic. I do not take many supplements. I'm all about getting things from food. And even with seed, I take it when I change my diet, I take it to help my gut biome sort of remodel. But there are a lot of people that I think would get a tremendous benefit out of utilizing it. So I put a link down below to save 15% off. It's cool technology with a capsule inside of a capsule, which means you're getting potentially this like proper delivery or you're getting sort of the proper colonization of various forms of bacteria and the prebiotics. But I think what I like most about them as a science-minded person is they really put a lot of money and a lot of effort into research. So that link is down below. I definitely recommend you check them out. Again, it's called Seed, and you use that code down below, and you can save 15% off whatever you want to try with them with that daily symbiotic. So down below. So I've talked about this in other videos, but the liver is the epicenter for energy manufacturing. So we have to remember that our substrates that ultimately give our cells fuel <laughs> kind of funnel through the liver, right? So this means we need to look at this as an indicator, okay, of what is potentially happening. So when you go to the doctor and you get your blood work done, you might see what is called your ALT and your AST. These are liver enzymes. And at first glance, you think if those are not elevated, we do not have a liver problem. That's not the case because there are situations, and there was one study in particular that took a look at type 2 diabetics, 204 of them, and it found that of these 204 type 2 diabetics, 87% had fatty liver. Okay, so a lot had a fatty liver. But with this, their ALT and their AST, these enzymes were not that elevated. They were on the high end of normal, but they weren't out of range, so they never would have flagged it algorithmically as something that's bad, right? But what we do see here is another piece that's very important. 87% of people that are type 2 diabetic have fatty liver in this case. So what I'm suggesting is step one, step one above all else, is you need to test your glucose levels, but you need to test them at a few different times. You need to test it in the morning and get a readout of where your fasting glucose is. If you're over 125 fasted, you need to make note of that because that is something to pay attention to. That's nothing to sneeze at, that's pretty elevated, okay? But the other things that I want you to pay attention to is after eating, especially carbohydrates, do you go north of 180, now, additionally, two hours after eating, are you still elevated above 140? Why am I saying this? Well, because these are sort of the markers with insulin resistance and potential type 2 diabetes. So we know there's a correlation between fatty liver and type 2 diabetes. So the first checkbox on your blood work is, well, is my glucose high? Because your blood work's not going to tell you directly if you have fatty liver. So the next one we need to look at is going to be your thyroid. People don't think about this, but your thyroid is so important when it comes down to fatty liver. People think the thyroid regulates the metabolism. No, I mean, in some ways, yes, but in a lot of ways, no, okay? The thyroid, a lot of times, is just the loud mouth that sounds off when there is something wrong. 
Okay, because with the thyroid, it's going to be decreased or you're gonna end up with hypothyroid and elevated TSH when there is a metabolic issue, not just when the thyroid has its own isolated problem. But why do I even mention this? Well, there's a study that was published in the journal Hepatology that took a look at almost 4,700 people, okay, and it found that there, 30% of people with hypothyroid had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. What this tells us is that something is going on here. So what you wanna look at on your blood work here is, is your TSH elevated, your thyroid stimulating hormone? Because if your TSH is elevated, that means your body's trying really hard to produce T3 and T4, okay? And it can't produce it, so it's skyrocketing the stimulating hormone. It's like more of the hormone that's trying to signal that to increase. Now, what this means is that not necessarily you have a dysfunctional thyroid, but it means that somewhere down the metabolic chain, you're having an issue that's causing this to happen. Hypothyroid and type 2 diabetes are commonly interlinked too. We see this a lot. Okay, so what you want to look at is like, okay, are my, is my TSH elevated? Is my T3 and my T4 low? Do I have high glucose? And are my ALT and AST on the high end of normal? This is very important to note. Okay, because if you're checking all three of these biomarker boxes, there's a good chance you do have fatty liver. And I hate to say that because I can't diagnose that you have it, but it's just looking at the data that stacks up. Now there's one other big piece that we have to look at, and I've talked about this in other videos. And if you're obese, FYI, you have three and a half times more likelihood of developing fatty liver. So then the odds really stack up against you. I am not a doctor, I can't tell you how to treat fatty liver, okay? That's not my job and I have to tread lightly with that. But I will give you a few tips, okay? A lot of times we see it happens with overfeeding. Overfeeding from glucose, overfeeding from saturated fat, overfeeding from food in general with lack of activity, okay? One of the things that I think is if you can start to implement more in the way of monounsaturated fats. Monounsaturated fats can help increase insulin sensitivity. If you increase insulin sensitivity, then you have more glucose potentially going to the cell and not just circulating, ultimately going through de novo lipogenesis and storing as fat, okay? So sources of monounsaturated fat that I'm a big fan of, okay? Macadamia nuts, okay, macadamia nuts are huge. Avocados, olive oil, but heck, I just eat a ton of avocados and quite a bit of macadamia nuts. I do the olive oil thing, but really I just eat a lot of those whole foods as much as I possibly can. Okay, then of course there's the fiber equation. Asparagus and artichokes are my favorite, not because they directly impact the fatty liver, but because as far as fiber bang for the buck and gut microbiome remodeling, they seem to be the most bang for the buck. So I am a fan of like seven to 10 stalks of asparagus a day. That's been my go-to for a long time. And when I have the opportunity, I love a good artichoke because that fiber in that artichoke, that very long chain inulin is super powerful. The third piece that goes without saying is you should be aiming for at least like maybe one gram of protein, at least per kilogram of body weight. Okay, and if you're active, I think it should be more. I don't like to say the amount of protein that I eat because sometimes it upsets people, but I try to eat one gram per pound of my body weight. I'm 185 pounds. I try to aim for 185 grams of protein. Why? Because the more protein I eat, the less other stuff I eat. It's that simple for me. I know the metabolic benefits of protein. I talk about them, but I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. I'll spare you the 30 minute explanation as to why it's good. Bottom line is from a metabolic side of things, protein is good. And I don't care if it's meat, I don't care if it's plant-based, that's on you. For me, I eat the meat, I like the meat. I eat lean meats that are lower fat, higher protein, so I can hit my macro goals of as much protein as I can, so that I'm not loading up on hyperpalatable stuff that is potentially being linked with a fatty liver. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.